in this episode of Hardware Info TV, Samsung's new 840 EVO SSD. Welcome to the pilot episode of Hardware Info TV in English. We've already been doing this on our Dutch side since 2006. And who knows what the future may bring for the English side. The topic of today is Samsung's new 840 EVO SSD. It's a new line of, well, I wouldn't necessarily say budget SSDs, but it's Samsung's new value line of SSDs. It's the successor of the original 840. And if we look quickly back through that original 840, that was the first SSD, commercial SSD, that used TLC memory chips. TLC, that's the acronym for triple level cell. And with these flash chips, every flash shell can hold three bits of data. So three zeros or ones. Most of the commercial SSDs are actually using MLC chips. Uh, and these MLC chips only store two bits of data per cell. And of course, the good thing about TLC memory is that you only need to use two thirds of the chip size to actually give you the same capacity. TLC chips, however, have two big disadvantages. First of all, it's the endurance. The, the amount of times that you can actually rewrite all these cells, the amount of times that you can put new information to these cells is a lot lower than with typical MLC cells. For the original 840, Samsung said that the, the endurance should be around 1000 of what they call PE cycles, programmer recycles, so you can put new data in there for a thousand times. And some tests we did internally at Hardware Info showed that uh, that was a pretty conservative number. We came al almost up to like 3000 cycles. And when we did some math on that with uh, an average amount of writes that a typical user does, which is around 10 gigabytes a day, we found out that there's nothing to worry about. Even when you do like 30 gigabytes a day and there's a lot of write amplification, you can still use that SSD for 50, 60 or even 70 years. The other drawback of TLC memory is that it actually takes a little longer to program them. It takes longer to actually put data inside. The effect of that is that the write speeds of TLC SSDs are a little less than normal SSDs. It's not a big difference, it's not something black and white, but what we definitely saw with the original 840 series was that the read speeds are on par with like most of the, of the SSDs that are on the market and the write speeds are a little lower. Well, that's the main thing that Samsung fixed in the 840 EVO because this new generation of 840 SSDs is still using TLC memory, but uh, with some new tricks that we're going to talk about a little later on, they uh, made sure that the write speeds are actually a lot higher. Okay, so the 840 EVOs uh, uh, are launched in various capacities. Smallest one, 120 gigabytes. Biggest one, one terabyte. That's actually new because the original 840s only went up to 500 gigabytes. And uh, what's still the same with the original series is that the price per gigabyte is actually quite low. Depending on where you live on, on the planet, we saw that the original 840s are like between six or seven euro cents or six or seven dollar cents per gigabyte. And that's roughly what we also see with the new 840 EVOs. And it's, it's a lot less, uh, it's a lot cheaper than most of the SSDs actually on the market. And if we look at the, um, at the specifications of the SSDs that Samsung now uh, introduced, we see that these write speeds are a lot higher than what we saw in the past. Uh, it, again, as always with SSDs, it depends on the capacity uh, what, what speeds you can achieve. So the 120 gigabyte version, the, the, the smallest one, uh, Samsung quotes uh, a max write speed of 410 megabytes per second. Uh, the 250 gigabyte version all the way up to the one terabyte version should give you 520 megabytes per second. Uh, for, for these ones, that's uh, more than twice the write speed of the original 840. For the 120 gigabyte version, it's actually more than three times the, the write speed of the original one. And the way they achieve that is a new technology they call turbo write. And that's actually something very nifty the Samsung engineers came up with. What they actually do is take a small piece of that TLC flash memory inside the SSD and treat that as being SLC memory, where SLC stands for single level cell. Uh, which actually means that you only put one bit of data, either a zero or one, in one flash cell. The good thing about using TLC chips 
as SLC is that you can write to them a lot faster. So TurboWrite is actually a, some kind of write buffer. What uh, uh, under the hood happens in the SSD is that every write operation to the SSD, whether it's uh, sequential rewrites or random writes, every single write operation first goes to that smaller file mount of TLC memory that's treated as SLC. And when the SSD idles a little later, because you don't do any write or read operations, then the SSD under the hood makes sure that the, that the, the data is transferred from that little buffer memory to like the normal TLC chips. So the size of that turbo write buffer actually depends on the size of the SSD. Again, for the smallest one, that's the 120 gigabyte version, there's a nine gigabyte of TLC memory that's actually used. And of course, nine gigabytes of TLC memory uh, e uh, e equals to three gigabytes of this semi SLC memory. Uh, for the bigger ones, the biggest one, the one terabyte version actually has 36 gigabytes of TLC memory. Um, for this TurboWrite buffer, which actually in the end turns out to be a 12 gigabyte buffer then. Um, but of course, what, what, what you see in practice, if, if, if when you keep on pushing data to that SSD uh, without having any idle time, so for instance, when you copy a very large file or do some workloads that, that, that generate a lot of write access, it might of course be that the buffer is full uh, before there is a time that the SSD actually gets some idle time. And what you see then is when the buffer is full, the SSD has to go writing directly to the TLC memory and then the actual write speeds are a lot lower. We, we, if we look at the specifications for the uh, 250 gigabyte version, for instance, the write speed within the, uh, T, the, the, within the turbo write buffer, that's already what we talked about, that's 520 megabytes a second. The moment your buffer is full, you go back to the normal TLC write speed of about 270 megabytes a second. But what Samsung is actually saying is that for like all typical consumer workloads, all typical things you do as a normal consumer with your computer, running a game, running Photoshop, all these kind of things, it will almost never happen that you run into the boundaries of that buffer. So like 99% of everything you do, all the right operations you do will actually turn out to be in that buffer. And that way the 840 EVO can be a lot faster, what we see later on. One interesting, one other interesting thing about the new SSDs is that the flash chips that Samsung is using, it's again, it's TLC memory, but it's a second generation. First generation of TLC memory was actually made with 24 nanometer transistors. They now transfer to 19 nanometer transistors. And Samsung succeeded in putting 128 gigabits of data in one in one specific die, in one chip. And with stacking these dies, they can, they can make the SSDs with, with only a small amount of chips. And here's for instance, the 250 gigabyte version of the SSD. And while the thing itself, of course, is the typical two and a half uh, inch form factor, you see that the PCB inside is a lot, lot smaller. It almost looks like a micro SATA SSD inside a two and a half inch thing. There's a lot of unused space in there. And even the biggest one, the one terabyte version, doesn't fill up the whole package. It, it, it's, the PCB is a little larger, around two times the size of this 250 gigabyte SSD, but still it's, it's very, very small. And that's also one of the main reasons why uh, Samsung can sell this for uh, not a lot of money. So before we go to the benchmarks, a few interesting new things that Samsung introduced with these series. First is a new addition to their SSD Magician software. And that's what the, that's the technology they call Rapid. And Rapid is actually a, uh, an, another buffering system and that's making use of your normal RAM, your, your normal memory inside your PC. Of course, almost never your, all of your memory is used. So what this software actually does is find out which, uh, which part of the memory of your normal RAM memory is unused and use that as a buffer for your SSD. And when you enable Rapid, your SSD will in the end be even faster than uh, uh, using it without a, uh, a buffer. The other interesting thing they're uh, supplying with the new Samsung 840 EVO SSDs is a new version of their data migration software. They already had that with the original 840 series. They already had software 
that uh, that helps you with migrating your laptop or desktop from a hard drive to a new SSD. But with the new version, they found a solution for a problem that a lot of people ran into, because usually when you uh, transfer your machine from an old-fashioned hard drive to an SSD, your new SSD, in the capacity of your new SSD is usually a, lit, a bit smaller than your hard drive, because we all know one terabyte hard drives are actually pretty cheap, so fair chance that you already have a one or two terabyte hard drive in your desktop, where one terabyte SSDs, well, they're on the market now, but they're still pretty expensive, so if you're gonna migrate your data, there's a big chance that you go, for instance, from a one terabyte hard disk to a 250 gigabyte SSD. Now, what this new software does, it actually uh, sees when you want to migrate more data than you than actually will fit on your new SSDs. It automatically going to look for very big files on your hard drive. For instance, uh, uh, video files is the best example. If you have a lot of HD movies on your uh, on your hard drive. It actually gives you a list of all the, these big files and you can select them during the migration process and uh, uh, say don't migrate these big files to my SSDs but instead of that copy them to an external hard drive for instance. So that way it's, it's a very easy way to migrate from a bigger hard drive to a relatively small SSD and still have your keep track of all your data including all your big files. All right, benchmarks then. We reviewed the complete series, so the 120, the 250, the 500, the 750, and the one terabyte version. All the test results can be found in the comprehensive review we've got online. For now, I took the benchmarks of the 250 gigabyte version, which probably will be the most popular one. Um, and first benchmark that we're gonna look at is AS SSD, it's one of the synthetic benchmarks that tests a few things, uh, sequential performance, random performance, a few other things, and actually uh, comes up with one total score that gives you uh, some, some, to, to some degree uh, a, a good one, one number fits all performance figure of an SSD. What we see is that 840 EVO 250 gigabyte comes uh, to a score of 1045 points. Uh, it's, it's not as much as the, as the, the real high-end SSDs that, of course, are a lot more expensive. The, the, the best performing SSD in this 250, 256 gigabyte uh, market is still Samsung's own 840 Pro. That's doing 1144 points in our benchmark. But the Evo is coming close, and especially if you compare it to the original 840, uh, uh, the, also the 250 gigabyte version that got to a score of 919 points. So definitely a big step ahead. And if you dive into the scores below this and all the subtests of AS SSD, you see that the read tests are around about the same as the original version and the write tests are a lot, lot better. One real world test then, PC Mark 7, that's using uh, what they call traces of the hard disk or SSD usage of real applications. So this benchmark mimics real applications using your SSD, uh, doing some things, and then uh, also PC Mark 7 computes one final score for that. Uh, and here we see that the 840 EVO actually gets to a second position in the benchmarks, just below the much more expensive 840 Pro. We're going to uh, we're coming at uh, 5,463 points, and again, that's definitely better than the original 840 250 that came to well, around about uh, uh, 5,250 points. Uh, if we look at the raw scores, so no normally PC Mark 7 also accounts for the idle time uh, of the benchmark. So uh, it again, it mimics real applications and. Of course, real applications don't use your hard drive or SSD all the time. There's also times that it doesn't do anything with your storage devices. If you take out all the idle time, the differences between uh, the scores of the of all the, the the devices tested get a little bigger. But with that, you get some more some, some better feeling of the real performance differences of the drives. And if we look at these, what they call raw scores, again, it's the Evo uh, second place, just behind the, the 840 Pro and uh, a big difference between the new 840 EVO and the original 840, but also a big difference between this one and other uh, value SSDs like Plexter's M5S, like Crucial's M500 or Kingston's V300. 
of course that all, all looks very good downside of course is that that good performance uh, is achieved thanks to that turbo ride buffer and again what i already told you is that most of consumer workloads uh, uh, don't have like a very continuous uh, um, uh, way of uh, sending write instructions to your ssd but more professional workloads things like server kind of workloads high-end workstation workloads might actually do that uh, to, to test that, we always do a continuous uh, test on SSDs in the Hardware Info Test Lab. That's a test that uh, we do for 15 or sometimes even 30 minutes. And for the, in that time, we keep on reading and writing data to an SSD. What we actually see is that within a few seconds when you do that, when you keep on writing data to the SSD, within a few seconds, you can actually fill up that turbo write buffer. So from uh, uh, that high write performance, you drop through the normal TLC levels within a few seconds. You can't even see that in this graph because this graph is uh, showing uh, the values for one minute, two minute, etc. Uh, uh, and uh, the, you already yeah, go down into in within like the first five or 10 seconds. And then the, um, the, the performance level you get within these first few minutes is it, it's it's still bigger it's still better than the original 840 but it's definitely less than most uh, normal ssds that use mlc memory after around about 11 minutes in our test the ssd comes to what the, what we call the steady state performance where uh, the the ssd really has to do some uh, garbage collection to 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 be able to process new write instructions and then the performance drops even lower and then it's, it's, it's actually lower than, than almost all 250 gigabyte SSDs that we tested. So what we learned from this is, and that, that's not a secret, that's also what Samsung is saying themselves, but what we learned from this is this is really a consumer grade SSD. It's not, um, it's, it's not very usable for server workloads. It's not very usable for other kinds of workloads with a lot of write instructions. But for things like, uh, again, Photoshop, gaming, typical consumer uh, uh, workloads, the performance is very good. That's what we saw with PC Mark 7 and also with a lot of other benchmarks we've run. Pricing, in the end, I already uh, said that uh, uh, Samsung is aiming at the same price level as the original 840. And what we see from our price compression engine is that the, the 840s are now, one of the most uh, uh, valuable SSDs that are on the market. They're cheaper than most of the SSDs from the other vendors like Crucial, Plexter, Kingston, OCZ, you name them. Um, 840 EVOs right now are a little more expensive than the original 840s. I think that's because the product is, is kind of new and e-tailers tend to take more margin on new products as long as they can. But I'm pretty sure that within a few weeks or, you know, a few weeks, one month, two months, that the prices of the EVO will go down to the level of what the 840 is on now and maybe even below that. Because, uh, again, for this second generation TLC memory, Samsung switched to smaller transistors. That actually means that the chips are even smaller than with the 840 and that the production costs of, the, of these new EVO SSDs must be lower than the original 841, so they should be able to sell them for less money than the original 840s. In the end, we're pretty enthusiastic about the new 840 EVO and full review with a lot more benchmarks. And again, all the specific models, everything from 120 megabyte to one terabyte can be found on the hardware info, both the UK version and the US version. That's it for today. Thanks for watching Hardware Info TV. Take care.